Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November Stroke Papa. Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. In a previous video, I showed you my Raspberry Pi powered HF radio and an ammo can go box. In this video, I'll show you how I powered my station for two days off grid, and we'll also discuss the methodology of deploying a QRO radio using solar power. So, stick with me a while, and I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign. The air. very first thing we need to talk about is the methodology or the idea of powering current hungry gear out in the field. First of all, in my opinion, I think it's impractical to think we're going to take the lessons from a home grid tied system, for example, and apply that methodology out in the field. It's also impractical to think we're going to take a traditional solar panel, a traditional battery box with a lead acid battery and an inverter out in the field. These old ways of doing things were also a limiting factor to our mobility. That may have been the way things were done back in the day, but today we need to be more conscious of our off-grid choices, especially when we're talking about MAM portable off-grid communications. Let's discuss some of my portable power guidelines. First and second on my list are no inverters and definitely no gear which requires AC power. Using an inverter to convert something which starts as DC, converting it to AC and then back to DC, is both heavy to carry and inefficient. Number three is about choosing panels which perform well in low light. A panel only reaching its maximum potential in full sunlight or suffering from heat or partial shade might not be practical to take to the field. So what seems like a good budget alternative right now might not be once you realize they're not producing power in the conditions we thought they would. Number four and five are about understanding your station's current and power requirements. Many of us are relying on these clever marketing documents which tell us how much runtime we get from a battery or solar power battery combination. Actually, the only one who can tell you how much current or power your station requires is you, and that's by doing the testing. Number six is about adapting a dynamic approach to operating when using solar power. When you have an efficient system producing lots of amps, of course you can afford to operate at higher transmit levels. On the flip side, when it's cloudy, hazy, or your panels are only getting partial sun, we need to ration the power that we have to make it last longer. It's very simple. Number seven is about our off-grid choices. More specifically, the choices we make in gear regarding weight and portability. Extreme expeditions, adventure radio, deploying in a disaster zone or operating completely off-grid, then you want to deploy with something that you won't have to leave behind because it's too bulky or too heavy. Many operators have made that mistake of exchanging a good deal for 25 to 30 pounds of extra gear loadout. There certainly is a time and a place to use those budget options, but when you're seriously off-grid in an unforgiving environment, then our best option is to use rugged panels which offer good performance in a variety of operating conditions. For this trip, I decided to take the Powerfilm FM1670-200. This is a 120-watt thin-film amorphous solar panel. And never mind if you don't have this panel, you can still understand the concepts of this video without it. So, I laid out the Powerfilm FM1670-200 in a clearing on the forest floor. From there, I used an extension cord to run energy collected from that panel to the Guinnesson GV10 lithium charge controller. The Guinnesson charge controller was responsible for taking the energy collected from the power film and using that energy to keep the battery levels topped up. Even with shadows and parcel shading from the trees, I still had an abundance of power coming in from the Powerfilm FM-16-7200. This combination of gear, the Powerfilm solar panel, the Guinnesson charge controller, and my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack allowed me to run all this gear 
effectively for both days. Now what I hope you're starting to take from this is the combination of PowerFilm solar panel, the Guinnesson charge controller, and my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack, all working together as an effective MAM portable solar generator. Let's look at the current consumption during the weekend. From one of my previous videos, we already know the Yaesu FT891 takes about an amp on receive and anywhere from 5 to 20 amps depending on our output power and mode. The Raspberry Pi running WSJTX in FT8 mode had 0.3 amps in receive and 1.2 amps on transmit. During the worst times of day, we were pulling in just under 3 amps from the power film. The Yaesu FT891 and the Raspberry Pi running WSJTX were only pulling 1.3 amps. That leaves us with a 1.7 amp solar surplus to play with. It also explains why I was able to get away with such a small lithium iron phosphate battery. Now despite my demonstration, there are still going to be those operators who insist it's not possible to operate MAM portable with a QRO radio in the field for any length of time. There will also be those operators who tell you a 1 amp current draw from your rig is far too much for MAM portable operations. If that were actually true, I would just go ahead and delete my YouTube channel because there'd be no point in trying to push the limits further and further with every video. So, not only am I able to power my station in the field, I'm actually able to generate an abundance of power with this configuration in the field. Now during this excursion, I was actually able to operate high power and complete the QSO with the station in Japan. We're going to show that QSO in another video. But the point here was deploying a station in the field with the Yaesu FT891 and a Raspberry Pi. Then keep that station powered up and running for the duration of the excursion without ever charging it with grid power. Now despite my field testing, some operators are still saying this configuration is too power hungry and too complex. But almost everything we've done on the channel since last year has led up to this point. Moreover, this was about the research, collecting and building the right gear, and taking it out to the field for field testing. I might be wrong, but it appears to me that we have a completely off-grid, solar-powered QRO field station. Many of us are already familiar with the Raspberry Pi, and hopefully you've seen my previous video where I've shown the Raspberry Pi powering an HF station in the field. Now there are two problems I wanted to solve with the Raspberry Pi when I was out in the field. That's the lack of battery backup and real-time clock. So it was important to find a solution that would be compatible with my portable power system. Now once I got home, I immediately started doing some research to solve this problem. Initially, I was only interested in powering the Raspberry Pi from an external power source. But when I found this solution, I realized the additional features were valuable to the solar-powered field station. This solution is called the Pi Juice Hat. I'll tell you about it in brief now, but then we'll do another video in detail on it later on. The Pi Juice Hat has several features that I'm interested in. Some modes are very dependent upon accurate timing on the computer, so the real-time built-in clock on the Juice Pi will help with that. Now the Raspberry Pi also lacks a proper soft shutdown button. You either pull the plug or plug it in. That's how you deal with it. But the Pi Juice Hat has a real shutdown button for onboard intelligent on and off switching. Another thing missing from the basic Raspberry Pi is a built-in battery. Well, yes, the Pi Juice Hat also has a built-in battery, but it also has built-in power management allowing the user to set up what happens in the event of a sudden power shutdown or low battery state. Finally, the Pi Juice Hat also allows you to connect external batteries or power the Raspberry Pi externally. 
All of these features are going to help us better integrate the Raspberry Pi into the solar-powered field station. So having this experience in hand, I now know how the station works, and I know how each component plays together with the others. Now I can move forward with packaging everything into one integrated solution. That solution is the AmmoCan Go Box. So let's have a quick recap of our achievements. We can power the entire field station off-grid with solar power. We no longer have any limitations operating QRP to QRO. Our entire station and station power is completely man-packable. And we've augmented the Android tablet with utility apps running on the Raspberry Pi. So let's not let any of these other operators tell us what we can and can't do with MAM portable field communications out of a backpack. So, there you have it. Look guys, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a thumbs up and a comment or share this video with someone or someplace where people might enjoy it. Rock and roll guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.